Paul, the, the eighth Doctor, mm-hmm. Doctor Who, yeah. how does it feel to be, you know, the eighth in the line of some of the great, greatest actors from the UK? I'd never considered it like that. Um, yeah, gratifying, I guess. Um, I come from that, what effectively was a, a, an interregnum, you know, there was a period before we made this, the so-called movie, there was a, when did they kick it into the long grass, 89, so it was seven years before we got to make the, the TV pilot, and I think that another nine years, uh, so there's that big gap in the middle, and that's where my doctor comes in. So, uh, you know what they call me? The shortest and the longest. Yeah, the, short, the shortest and the longest yeah. doctor. Uh, that's me, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so mine is from the sort of wilderness years, you know. It's a funny one, isn't it? And being the shortest and the longest, I mean, that's, that's a title that no other doctor, uh, I, I, as far as I can foresee, will, will ever have. I guess you're right. I can't see it ever having another wilderness, can you? Somehow. I, I don't think so, anyway. I think it's got a... It's got a, a, an everlasting life now to it, I think. What we were saying before, you know, probably 20 years, 30 years, 40 years and more from now, it'll still be, it'll still be being made somewhere by somebody. Hmm. I just heard d- just now about um, Peter Jackson's purported involvement. Who released? Oh, well, it's just a rumour, but it's yeah. one of those things you, you're constantly hearing rumours about it, you know. I guess that's one of the things about the show, is that, you know, it's, it's one of the shows that a lot of people would want to get involved in, even, even when they're at the peak of their, like Peter yeah. Jackson, for example, he'd want to do it. And also, well, yes, as well, that, you know, that there are fans everywhere. You know, we, we, McCoy was telling, telling you before, you know, all of us in turn has been down at Weta, the workshops down in Wellington, and they're all fans, you know, you forget these brilliant people um, are all fans of things, because that's how it starts, you know. Um, and I'm sure that Jackson is the same. You know. Doing things like this, like the convention circuit, I guess being a Doctor Who, it's, it's, it's not just, you know, you may be the shortest Doctor, but it doesn't just end after that. It, it certainly goes on with conventions and other stuff. How, how, does that, how do you feel about effectively being the Doctor permanently? Yeah, it's a strange one, though, because uh, it did strike me. Um, not so much at the time when I was doing it, because I wasn't really aware from having no, I had no experience of that syndrome, I guess. Um, but quickly came to realise that, I mean, I was only Doctor Who for six weeks, and we, this thing took six weeks to shoot. But really, whether it had been six days, six minutes, six hours, six months, doesn't matter. Once you've done it, you've done it. And once you're in the kind of pantheon, I suppose, you, you're in it. Um, it's a weird feeling. It's a strange one. Um, I guess it brings you to some, of the, some great places, but like New Zealand. You end up on a stamp or on a coin, you know. And sometimes I think, well, do I really deserve that I was only in that? It was just a, it was one job pretty much like the others in that in a technical sense. Um, and it was only a six week gig. And yet I'm here with these guys who were Doctor Who for years. Um, but that's how it is. And also, but also I, mine, my incarnation of it, and the Eighth Doctor generally. I know because I get followed on the internet and certain characters and trolls and the like often, you know, sometimes say to me, you're a waste, you're a waste of a regeneration. And, you know, so there's strong feeling out there. Um, I've got to say as well, as a percentage, it's tiny because most you know, people are very supportive. Sometimes I've felt that um, the Eighth Doctor is slightly tolerated rather than because um, he wasn't around for long enough, say, to, to be a part of the, of the whole thing. But then I'm in the, I'm in the family. He's in the family. Yeah. Do, you, do you have any uh, ideas or any hints, sneaks, tips any, of what's going to come up in this 50th year anniversary in any of these speeches? I know as much as you do. I know what I read. Um, I don't get any telephone calls, nor my agent's office or anybody else. And I know the, 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 the boys are the same. Well, um, we read last week that David Tennant, Billy Piper are going to be in it, you know, so we're as au fait as everybody else, you know, and, and as up to speed um, as you are with it. But I guess, knowing the, knowing television as I do, knowing the industry as I do, and given as well, I think, I think Chris Eccleston's a big factor in it, because Chris, Chris is probably, I don't want to speak for him, but he's, um, he's probably reluctant to get involved in anything that's ongoing. Um, so that's something that they've got to somehow get over 
and deal with. Um, so I'm, I'm guessing, and they've got time to do it. Still, it's not quite the anniversary yet. The anniversary doesn't start until November. So whatever it is that they're planning and they're making, um, they've got time to do it. But I, it's my feeling, this is just a personal thing, that once they resolve Chris Eccleston's participation or non-participation in our, either way, then they're, then they're free then to you know, write the thing. If it's Moffat that's going to write it, presumably it will be. Um, so, you know, we'll know more then, I think. And being actors anyway, they'll call us on the Friday and say you're starting on the Monday, you know, so we're not going to know till the 11th hour, half past 11. Is it quite a bit like that, you know, a very, very fluid, very flexible? No, that's how it is. That's always how it is. Things are cast, it doesn't matter, not just Doctor Who, but any films, particularly films and television that you're involved in, um, you're cast at the end. Casting is always always the last thing that, that's done. So you could be giving a call right now this afternoon and say, oh, you've got to be back in the UK for something I've Monday. I've counted the times in 30 years as an actor that said, I've just been offered something and you're starting next week. And this idea, you know, that, that's... Uh, that gets around, you know, that, oh yeah, actors like to do six months of research and, you know, and, method and, and employ some method, I wish, you know. No, no, you just get time maybe to just settle your affairs, have a shower, um, tax your car, whatever it is, and go to work, that's it, that's it. Are you looking forward to tomorrow's, uh, tomorrow's convention? Yeah, yeah, come all this way, it seems, seems daft not to. I like them. Initially, when uh, I was asked to be involved in them, I was a bit sceptical, just through being shy. Um, a lot of performers, almost perversely, are quite shy people. And I thought, oh, geez, the idea of walking in a room of 2,000 or 1,500 or whatever is you know, ardent fans. is not probably studied the whole thing as well. Yeah, and no it's more not than my cup of tea. And, you know, and, and, until you've been to one, you don't realise actually just how. I mean, how much of a sense of humour the thing has. I was a bit concerned to start with that they perhaps... I mean, you don't know, you know. Do they believe this stuff? I mean, are people... Because you hear these stories, you know. Soap operas are the same. You know, you, occasionally you meet people that believe what's going on on the television. So, you know, you multiply that by 50, and you're thinking, what kind of atmosphere might I expect? But in the event, it's been great, you know, and I'm really glad uh, that I've, uh, I've got involved in these kind of things. Because aside from anything else, it's a laugh. You know, actors like, enjoy the sort of gratification. Who doesn't like a pat on the back, you know, and talking about the work? You either do or you don't, I don't but I like it. Um, and like I said, we're all fans anyway, so. It's a good atmosphere. Even if we are jet lagged. The amazing is the amount of time you do these completely upside down. So they have that sort of surreal tinge anyway. Everybody's a little bit like that. I'm surprised with the jet lag, you're not hitting, hitting your head against the table right now. It's just one of them things. I don't know where I am, to be perfectly honest with you. It's Ireland somewhere.